On today's show, we're going to photograph your models just like the pros do. Promotional consideration for Amazing Plastic the Scale Model Show is brought to you by Tenna Controls, makers of scale model lighting systems. Tenna Controls brings models to life. Visit them today at tenacontrols.com. And by Vallejo Acrylic Paints, with a wide range of highly pigmented colors specially formulated for models and miniatures. Vallejo Acrylic Paints sold at hobby stores worldwide. And by Model Land Limited, specializing in radio control and scale models. Our store may be small, but our inventory is huge. Visit them today at modelland.com. Hey, welcome to Amazing Plastic, the Scale Model Show. I'm your host, Richard Cleveland. This is our first show of 2014. This is episode number five. I want to thank you for joining us once again. We've got a lot of great stuff on today's show. We're going to be going behind the camera with our good friend, Phil Robson, who's going to give us some tips and tricks on how to photograph our models to make them look good for our websites, for Google Plus communities you might be involved in, as well as for your Facebook page, or even just for your own collection. You may want to hang them up on your wall. Who knows? Uh, but we do want to thank a bunch of people right at the top of the show. We have been very busy over our little Christmas hiatus. And some of the people we want to thank is Iwata Medea for sending over some gear for us to use here in uh, the studio. We're going to show you how that gear works. We're going to do a review on all the parts of that gear and uh, really bring you up to date and, you know, try and tell you why uh, Iwata Medea might be the right product for you. Uh, we're also going to be discussing a lot of painting. Speaking of uh, airbrushes and, and gear like that, we're going to be discussing a lot of painting. Uh, we're going to get into the right tools. We're going to get into paint mixing, custom paint mixing. We're also going to be showing you how to paint your models. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with how to use an airbrush or you're a rattle can user or even a brush user, we're going to go into all those little techniques. And then later on, we're going to get into some more advanced stuff like weathering and washes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got some great shows coming up for you uh, in the next few weeks. We are going to have Jack Holzer back on the show. He's going to be talking about fiber optics. Uh, we're going to have Jay Barron back with another uh, look at doing molds, this time two-part molds. He's going to be coming up in a, in a few days. Um, we've also got Danny Monahan, the Armor King, as he's been known. Uh, Danny's a great model builder and really has an affinity for doing armor. So we are definitely going to uh, be looking at that. He's going to be doing his, uh, a subject on what's old is new. He's going to be taking his old models and giving them uh, a fresh new look. So he's going to show you how to do that. Uh, what else do we have coming up? We're going to be going and talking with somebody about glue. Uh, we're going to delve into one of our other members. David Stahl did an interview with a gentleman not too long ago all about glue. And uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to show you some products from Bob Smith Industries as well coming up uh, in an upcoming show. We're also going to be showing you some great products from a company called FlexiFile. Uh, that's all coming up uh, in upcoming episodes. So we want to thank those folks. We also want to thank uh, a great deal of other people. I want to thank Jason Gares over at Video Workbench for all the great promotion work that he's doing to help get the word uh, out about Amazing Plastic. If you haven't checked out Video Workbench, check them out on YouTube. You can go to their website as well. Video Workbench has... All kinds of great tutorials. Every Wednesday, there is a brand new show from Video Workbench on YouTube, usually about a half hour long. And if you can't find them over there, you can certainly go over to our website where we'll be posting uh, links to all of the uh, future episodes of 
video workbench. So uh, we want to thank Jason Garris for all his support. I want to thank all the people behind the scenes that got us to this point. Again, um, we had a great time. You guys know who you are. I don't have to reiterate your names. Um, So let's get on with the show. You know, all kinds of great things happened over Christmas. All kinds of great things happened here in the studio. We're building models like crazy here to help you improve your skills as a model builder. So let's go and check in with Phil Robson and see what he's talking about when it comes to photographing your models. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this segment of Amazing Plastic Scale Model Show. I'm Phil Robson, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to photograph your model. Now, you've spent days, weeks, perhaps even months, uh, building, painting, and detailing your model. And when it's finished, or now that it's finished, you want to show it off to your friends, family, and perhaps even the community that you're a member of. And what I'd like to do is give you a few tips, tricks, and pointers so that uh, you can get the best result possible. So naturally, the first thing you're going to require to be able to take a photograph is, uh, is a camera of some sort. So there are many options today, and we start with um, a high-end uh, single-lens reflex camera, which has interchangeable lenses for flexibility. Being a digital camera, it also has a built-in flash, which we will need, and obviously it provides lots of flexibility as far as uh, exposure and shutter speed settings. You also can use a simpler point-and-shoot type camera, uh, which also has uh, zoom capability, built-in flash, and some other flexibility as far as uh, exposure is concerned. Of course, you can use your cell phone. All cell phones today take a very reasonable photograph, and just about all of them will also have a built-in flash, which is important. And finally, you can use your tablet PC. However, one drawback on using the tablet PC is that uh, a lot of them don't have a flash. So that will uh, de- really depend on the type of lighting you use as to whether you could use that type of uh, piece of equipment. So now that you've decided on which piece of equipment you're going to use to take the photograph, you need to light the model. Now this, obviously, you can simply light the model with the flash from the camera. But it also helps to have what we call filling light. So that will enable you to perhaps take the photo without a flash, which can have the ability to cast shadows unless you stage the model fairly carefully. So what are your options there? Well, probably the simplest options are to use your work lamp. Uh, If you're like most of us modelers, you have an area where you do your modeling and you need light. And uh, most of us will have some sort of desk lamp or work lamp that we use. So this particular lamp here, this one that over my modeling desk, is on a telescoping tripod or, or attachment. And that allows me to move this light wherever I need it when I'm modeling. However, the nice part about this lamp is it has an incandescent lamp and it also has... And I'll turn that off so you can see it. It also has a tubular fluorescent lamp uh, around the edge, which gives me a light balance. Now, the reason for that is incandescent lamps um, generally lean towards a reddish cast. If you've ever taken a photograph under incandescent lamp, you'll see the photos sometimes can look very red. If you take one under pure or the old-style fluorescent lamps, um, they lack red in colour and therefore you end up with a greenish cast. Well, this lamp um, mechanically gives me some color balance. So I've got the lack of green or blue in the incandescent, and uh, the lack of red in the fluorescent. And there's the fluorescent on. And what I have now is a fairly natural light, and that's called color balance. However, with uh, a lot of today's fluorescent lamps, you can actually purchase uh, 
daylight uh, lamps which, are, which already have the colour balance uh, engineered into them. Another option is just a simple and straightforward fluorescent desk lamp. Wait till that comes on. This one takes a little few minutes to fire up. Okay, so there we have, and that's still that again is a fairly uh, natural white light. It's a nice lamp. Both of these lamps, it's on a gooseneck, and it is adjustable and on a fairly heavy base, and obviously this one's adjustable. So these are good options. One other option is a more uh, robust, if you like, lamp. This is a, an LED work lamp, and it casts a very, very bright white light. And I'm going to switch that on. I'm not going to point it to the camera. Okay, it's a little bit of flare there. That is a very natural light uh, approaching uh, normal daylight, which is perfect for photography. So, there are artificial light options. Another option, of course, is to photograph under natural daylight. Now, there's some problems with doing that. One is you really should always avoid having direct sunlight fall on your model. So you need to photograph uh, basically in the shade. However, um, try to avoid photographing in the early morning because when the sun is low, uh, on the horizon during the early morning, the atmosphere absorbs red light and will give you a bluish cast to your photograph. Conversely, at the other end of the day in the afternoon, the atmosphere tends to absorb blue light and that gives your photograph that warm uh, reddish uh, type tone. So best to photograph uh, between the hours of say 11 and 3 when the sun is highest in the sky and also out of direct sunlight. So now, we have our camera, we have our light source, we have our model, we need to stage it. What we don't want to do is photograph mum doing the dishes in the background or grandpa asleep in the chair with his mouth open. So we need to make sure that when we stage the model that the model is the only thing that we can see. Uh, because obviously that's what we want people to look at. So <clears throat> when staging the model, we need to create an artificial environment. There's lots of things you can use to do that. This is just some simple uh, brown craft paper, which is, gives us a nice neutral background, because also in photographing your model, you want to have a high contrast base and a high contrast background to keep your model to the fore. So that's what draws the viewer's eye, is the model, not the background or not the background clutter. Craft paper is very good for background and base. For a very high contrast on a light model, this is a piece of black velvet stretched over a wooden frame. It's very simple and very effective. You can use it as a base and you can also use it as a backdrop. Another thing is a piece of masonite. Masonite, again, it's brown, it has a slight mottling to it, and gives a really nice neutral base or background to what you're shooting. And you can shoot most colours on this because it is quite neutral. We we'll also could use a piece of white card. This is a simple foam core card. You can get this at the dollar store for, uh, a, yeah, guess what, a dollar a piece. And the same card, this one's black, has white on the other side, so we could choose either side. So, with these different pieces, we can begin now to stage our model. So, we'll progress now, and uh, we will stage the Hunter Killer for photography. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a backdrop. As you can see, there's quite a bit of black background clutter. In here. So we're going to take a piece of black card, black foam core, and just prop it between my lights like that. Now I'm going to turn on, that's my the incandescent light, turn on the fluoro. Okay, so now we have a backdrop, and what, you can notice there's some ripples in this card. 
you don't need to worry about that. That really doesn't come up um, very much in the photograph. We'll start by placing the model on the black velvet surface. I'm not shooting this model lit, um, but of course, if you wanted to shoot the model with your with your lighting, um, the uh, approach would be a little different because you'd want to highlight the light, the lights that are, are glowing and flashing and what have you. While I took quite a few photographs, I chose this one as being the best of the group that I took. Here we're going to photograph uh, our model of the Martian from the uh, War of the Worlds movie. However, this model has been sitting on the shelf for months. Dust it. So, um, again, we're going to use some overhead light, our incandescent and our fluorescent mix, and we're using our fairly bright um, LED work light to light it. So, let's take some photos. This first photograph I'm taking without a flash, just handheld. Same photo now with a flash. Take a top shot. Turn him around. to bring out the, the War of the Worlds logo. Note the difference between no flash and with flash. Here's the shot taken from the top. And with a little bit of post-processing on the computer, a very menacing aspect is cast on the model. So the bigger the model, obviously the bigger the staging area needs to be. So you may need a larger piece of card for the base or a larger piece of card for the back. This model uh, is grey in tone, and I don't think the white is going to lend itself too much to that. So we're going to change to our velvet background. There we go. All right, that should be good. Okay, now we're going to photograph this one with the lights on, so we're going to try and avoid flash wherever possible. But as you can see, we've got quite a lot of shadow happening here. Shouldn't shouldn't be too much of a problem, um, but we'll see how it goes. Here the model was shot on the craft paper as a background, and this model was shot on the black velvet. Well, thanks for joining me for this segment. I hope that I've given you a few pointers to get you on in photographing your model. Remember to stage it carefully, light it carefully, and take lots of
lots of photos. Remember, the camera only captures the light. It is up to you, the photographer, to produce that wow photograph. On an upcoming segment of the Amazing Plastic Scale Model Show, one of our members will be showing you how to process your photograph in software on your PC, because having taken the photograph, um, there's a lot more you can do to it uh, with a little bit of software to present it in the best light. So keep an eye out for that. So thanks for joining me, everybody, and happy modeling. Well, as you can see, it doesn't matter what type of camera you use, as long as you have good lighting and you have some basic techniques to get you through photographing your models. You can make them look spectacular in photographs. So we want to thank Phil Robson for all of his tips and tricks on today's show. Now, a few things I want to cover just before we let you go. Amazing Plastic, the scale model show, has changed its format a little bit. We are now going to twice a week, Monday and Friday, this being the first show of the new year. You can catch another show on Monday where we're going to be talking about the basics of painting tools. And we're going to talk about brushes. We're going to talk about airbrushes. We're going to talk about pressures and, and all kinds of things that are associated with that. We're also going to give you a rundown of what comes in the deluxe kit from Iwata, everything to get you started as an airbrusher. So we're going to show you all the stuff that comes in that kit and show you why it's such a good value for you as a model builder. Uh, if you don't know where to find us, you can find us all over the place. You can check us out at our Google Plus community at Amazing Plastic. We encourage you to come over there. We've got a ton of people over there sharing their tips, tricks, techniques, how-tos all the time. People are showing off their builds. Uh, so we really, really um, are happy to have them as a part of our community. And we'd like to have you as a part of our community as well. So come on over and check us out. If you haven't uh, subscribed to us on YouTube, please go over and like us and, and subscribe to us over on YouTube. Uh, it always helps out. We're trying to bring up the numbers a little bit. You can also like us on Facebook as well. Just look for Amazing Plastic. Or if you're trying to find all of these places, how to get to them all, Tell you what, one easy place to go, it's amazingplastic.com. If you go to amazingplastic.com, up in the right-hand corner by our big logo, click any one of those little icons, it'll take you right there. You can become a member. Everything we do on this show right now is free. We don't want to charge you for anything, so... If you uh, want to show your support for the show, however, you can go over to our Cafe Press Store, pick yourself up one of these fantastic T-shirts, get yourself a coffee mug or whatever you'd like. There's all kinds of great products over there to show your support for Amazing Plastic. Every little bit helps to producing the show, so we uh, we appreciate all the help that you're, you can give us. Uh, we also have a, a donate button or a tip jar if you so like the show and you want to help us out in the in the back end a little bit. We'd appreciate that, too. Uh, what do we got coming up on Monday's show? Like I said, we're going to be talking about painting, uh, on next Friday's show, we are getting into the, another part of Jay Barron's two-part molding process. And if you're not familiar with Jay Barron by now, he is the owner and operator of Evil Duck Creations, one of my very good friends, and I'm so happy to have him as a part of the show. Uh, what else can we tell you about real quick before we go? Well, we want to say Happy New Year to you, and we're glad that you're with us. We're going to be taking you right through until the middle of June, so we're planning 50 episodes. Uh, before we go, the Jimmy Build. That's what i got to remind you of. The Jimmy Build is something that we are doing to raise money for the jimmy foundation if you're looking for more details about the jimmy foundation please go over to our website or check out our google plus community all the information is there about the jimmy charity build the jimmy fund um, it is a charity that is designed to raise awareness uh, and funds for cancer research uh, particularly for children and it is an international uh, organization uh, so if uh, you are interested and you want to take part, build a kit for charity. Uh, all the details are there and what we're looking for. And we're going to be auctioning off all of the people that uh, are are part of that, uh, that build. We're going to be auctioning off those models to raise money. And we're hoping to hit about $3,000 um, to uh, help out the Jimmy Fund. So if you uh, are a member of our community and you want to take part, 
find a find a kit that's uh, no more. You cannot have paid any more than twenty dollars for the kit. Uh, no aftermarket parts, so it's pretty much a box stock build. But here's the caveat: if you have extra parts within your um, bits box or in your drawers or, you know, just hanging around that you want to add into the kit. Well, you're welcome to do that, but you can't go out and buy any extra photo etch or anything like that. You are permitted to put it on a nice base if you like. And that, uh, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't hinder the the rules at all. So if you want to make a custom base for it, you're welcome to do that. Uh, so that's, uh, that's all we have for this week's show. Thank you again for joining us. I'm Richard Cleveland. We'll see you next time at the workbench.